open up um, Mass um, and I'm logging in through myself, Scott Matthew. So I'm going to have to block some of this out. <laughs> but essentially, um, Context Planner Report Store Accounting in my office. Um, the setup is under File, Company Setup. It's simple. You have your basic information, ranks, classes, finance, um, leads where they've heard about you, different users and the access levels. Um, read, edit, add, delete the different tabs and the different categories up top. Um, then for the CRM, what access you have to what calendars, uh, what reports you can do, and then my office, which is really the back end. Um, oh, good automation. So, <coughs> what you saw earlier, uh, you can have it set up so within so many days you can have someone follow up a, a task created by that. Um, also, let's see. When people check in, you can have it set so different sounds are made for different. They had a birthday if they're canceled, if they're delinquent within so many days, if they're expiring. Um, barcode's not recognized. So, essentially, the check in for this is much different. There's a separate program running in the background at all times called Attendant Smart. Attendant Smart, if you're set up with a serial um, scanner, um, will scan in the background. So you can be doing anything on the computer, and if anyone scans in, it will scan in. For employees, um, it's a, you can set whatever number you want, and if you add the E at the end, that's how you actually clock them in and clock them out. So. Um, the check-in, check-out, and clock-in process is all streamlined within the same thing, unlike Champions Way. And it can also be running in the background and not online um, at any time. So I could be working on my Word document or maybe working on QuickBooks at the same time and have kids check in, and it won't be a problem. Um, so basically, to get to a client's information, context is already opened up. Um, right here, you have your basic information. Oh, I don't need clients. Yeah, this would make more sense. Um, so, within the basic information, you have first name, last name, all of the information you'd ever want. All of these categories are editable in custom fields, so you can put in whatever you want, um, whatever's specific to your business. Um, and then the detail tab is basically for your marketing so you understand where people are coming from um, who they're bringing in when you heard from them the sources which are started doing the back end and your marketing sources um, you can set experience um, objectives if you have like a trial lesson so many days expires in um, this is obviously set up originally for martial arts programming that's why the rank and style are there um, we're obviously a fitness gym, so we don't use all of the features. Uh, next follow-up, who did it? Class 1 and Class 2. Um, so that's basically a lead prospect. The system is set up, so there's all of these categories. Lead prospect, student, canceled, employee, supplier, company, and personal. Each one of them has a different ability to touch on these different tabs. If I were to set to a student, um, I have to have a birth date put in um, in order to save or cancel. And a first name, last name, obviously. Um, even if I were to write test, test, and hit save, it's going to tell me to enter a birth date. So, let's say hit save. And I bring them over to the finance tab, which only students are able to do. This is where I can do um, my different billing. So I have a chance to do a limited program, which means it's so many months 
Um, I could set it to be a uh, one month, three month, whatever, X amount of month program and say that it costs X amount of dollars and they have to pay within so many months, um, one time up front, whatever, but it's, it's limited. There's a limited time frame. Drop in essentially would be like a punch card or you have so many classes and they cost you X amount of dollars each class. And every time you come in with your card, with your number, with the last, with a D at the end, it would essentially take one of those away and the left would drop down. Um, and the last would be an ongoing program, which would mean you build every however long and it keeps going until you cancel it. All of our programming currently is that. So if two days or three days, um, a month to month contract is six month and a 12 month um, minimum, obviously. It gets cheaper depending on if, what you sign up for. Uh, but then they keep going actually at, at the end. That's why it's an ongoing program. So you have a chance to put it as an extension, a renewal, or no log. This would be no log because it's brand new. Um, discount type, I have it currently set. You can do percentage or dollar amount um, to siblings. And tuition price, which you can change on the fly depending on what access you give the person. Um, and a down payment if you have an enrollment fee, which we currently do, which also you can change on the fly depending on what access you have. Um, through their system, if you use what's called Billing Direct, you can do EFT, which is um, through your checking account or credit card. You put in the information, you put in the billing information, and you can change what billing cycle weekly, bi weekly, quarterly, semi annual, or annual. Um, you set each payment already up top by the tuition price plus the discounts, or minus rather, and um, choose a payment start date. You can type it in or click on it. And it's as simple as going to active, freeze, or discontinued. So if someone comes and says their daughter broke their arm, they want two months off, but they want to get right back up, you can hit freeze and hit save and it will freeze it right away. And you actually, when you go to freeze, once it's been activated, it will ask you when the next time you want to bill it. And you can choose the day just like this. So you can three months, four months, however many out. Um, once you've activated it, it will show you in here owing balances, number of payments left, delinquent amount, next payment amount, next payment due. Um, pretty simple system. Um, that's that piece. Um, the store piece is just as easy. You go to set up if you want to add something, go to add. You choose inventory or non inventory. If it's an inventory item, you can obviously choose the cost of goods, um, where your supplier is, who you're getting it from. Um, non inventory, you put what accounts, but the price, anything in the POS has to be attached to the customer. So if it's a parent sent out one non member, um, so if I were to say cash check or charge and they say cash, I'm going to have to choose the person. Um, I've done it before where I've set up some mock accounts where it's easy just to go to that. Let's say if I sell waters and stuff, attach to everyone's account. It's obviously a lot cleaner that you know who's buying what. Um, but for speed's sake, you can always make up people. Um, the last piece is the reports, which are just as simple as finding whatever you want and hitting display. Um, the other system, this is pretty convoluted. In terms of the reports for the old system, for the people, it's as simple as right clicking on the top bar and you can change any of these pieces to be any piece you see within your basics or detail tab. Um, so if you'd like to start off the list with the address or the city or the alt ID like I've had, this is all editable and you click it to sort it one way or the other. Um, for right now, um, I guess I'll probably release this and um, see what kind of feedback I get and I can easily add and show any other features that someone would like to see. Um, but for now, this is uh, Scott Manthe signing out.